My name is Bob Irving, and I welcome you to Solberry United Methodist Church, but you already knew that. Does anyone have any announcements this morning? Connie? Well, at 1.05 <laughs> this afternoon, the Phillies are playing their last preseason game, and it's televised, and my grandson, Arrow, is the bat boy. Oh. oh! Yes! Today and tomorrow, he's the bat boy for oh. Phillies, but today's on TV, tomorrow's oh, not. Wow! Yeah! Which channel? 29? Um, no, I think it's 846. Or 7, one of the other. One of the Comcast channels. One of the Comcast channels. Yeah. Yes. 847, I think. So, if you see a little bat boy running around, oh. a little 10-year-old arrow, that's him. Now, here's a question for the congregation. Is the pastor allowed to go to a bar to watch a Phillies game <laughs> to sorry. see Connie's grandson as Bat Boy. Yes. Of course. <laughs> of course. Just don't announce it. <laughs> <laughs> announcements. The pastor's going, no. Are there other announcements this morning? I have a, uh, I have a couple. Uh, one is Happy uh, Palm Sunday. And on the back table, if you haven't picked up your um, uh, scriptures for Holy Week, I have a... Um, little handout for you to follow as Pastor Bob uh, goes through his uh, meditations for a Holy Week. So don't forget that. The second thing is um, thank you to like the village here because uh, we now have more than a hundred dinners in the freezer. Um, Peggy brought in 49 Kathy and I packed, uh, packed some the other day that were of the uh, pork roast that Edna and Carl brought in. So it really was a village kind of thing. So we have plenty to go to um, caring for friends this month. We also now have two of our wonderful giant free tur free uh, hands in the freezer that will be working on this Month. And then uh, yesterday I got a call from Bert Johnson who said that uh, through some miscommunication um, uh, the food pantry was given 30, um, 30 hams for McCaffrey's. They really only needed 10. So he is giving 10 hams to Muriel to use for the community kitchen or whatever. And um, I said, yes, we have room for 10. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oops. So uh, we'll have plenty of ham packing here <laughs> over, the next, over the next few weeks. So um, just get ready for to help with, uh, with that. <laughs> That's it? That's it. Uh. Are there other announcements? Welcome, welcome, David. Welcome, David. <laughs> <laughs> and where's that, where's that baby half tucked in there? The plan is for him to make an appearance toward the Wait. end of the service. <laughs> That's the plan, but you know, man makes plans, yeah. God laughs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babies laugh, too. <laughs> and welcome back, Beth. Yeah, yeah. Yes. be back. I, I meant to say that. Yes. Yeah, great. Let us center ourselves for worship. Will you please rise if you are able and join me in the call to worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise with joy in our lips. We will travel through betrayal and death. Pray greatly deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week and we will follow. For he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. We wait in calm branches in anticipation. We lay our love before him to 
Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. Will you please join Connie and Marge in our opening hymn, Hosanna, Loud Hosanna, found in your hymnal number 278. circumstances of our lives. Help us to know that all we are is bound to you. Teach us to rest on your steadfast love as the source of our gratitude and joy as we, your sheep, follow you wherever you lead. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is from Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 11, and can be found in the insert in your bulletin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness, and being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name, so that at the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to his disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. 
May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let us now offer one another a sign of peace. In case you didn't know, that's my son-in-law, David. <laughs> I like him. I'm sorry. We like him too. <laughs> now is the time for our sharing of joys and concerns. Does anyone have any joys they wish to share? Other joys? I'm uh, just grateful that my two sisters have been able to help out with my mom and dad. So my sister from Colorado is somewhere above Iowa right now on her way back to Colorado. And my sister from Florida is at my parents. She's doing her two week um, stay and then I'll go back up. So just grateful that we've all been able to pitch in and Nice rotation. Yeah. Other joys. How about concerns? Bert is on his way to uh, Pittsburgh today. He's driving out there by himself to meet up with, obviously, um, Michael and her mom, uh, Edith. So. Prayers for his safety because it's a long, yucky trip. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Turn <Turnpike. laughs> Other concerns? Just um, continued healing for my mom and our several friends who are healing from surgery. Other concerns? I think continued prayers for um, Peggy's aunt Janet, who is um, in the, the nursing facility with uh, memory care and um, has had COVID and is, has been quarantined and obviously doesn't understand any of that. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned for my friend, good friend Carol from the Coral Society. She, uh, well, she had a stroke a year ago and is in a wheelchair, not able to walk. And last week they found cancer in her mouth. Mm -hmm. And uh, she goes to Fox Chase to look for them to look at that. One. Seems like they're one thing and then the other. Other concerns?
then. Let us pray. Lord, we are so very grateful for opportunities that are given to our children and our grandchildren, like the opportunity to be a bat boy for the Phillies. And we're very grateful that Beth has come back to us. We love seeing her. And we thank you for the health that Edna has been experiencing, and we pray for her continued recovery. And we, we thank you for all those that pitch in and come together and work as a team to try to feed those who are hungry. And we're grateful for the joys of family when they participate and help us carry burdens, such as caring for older parents. And we pray for all those who are traveling, especially for Bert, who's heading out to Pittsburgh. And we pray for healing for all those that have, have experienced surgery. And we pray for continued healing for, for Kathy's mom. We pray for Peggy's Aunt Janet, who is currently in dementia and is suffering from COVID and does not, does not understand all the rules and regulations and probably doesn't even understand why she's where she is. We ask you to lay your calming hand upon her. And we pray for Carol, who has suffered a stroke, has been trying to recover, and has now been diagnosed with cancer. We pray that the doctors and nurses that treat her will be able to help her regain her health. And now as the congregation names the names of the people that are on their heart, we will respond with, Lord, hear our prayer. Eve. Lord, hear our prayer. Harry and Nancy. Noah Robert. Hear these prayers, O Lord, and the prayers for the people that are on our heart that we did not name. And we praise you and worship you by reciting the words that your son taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Will you please join Connie and Marge in our next hymn, Tell Me the Stories of Jesus, found in your hymnal, number 277.
gospel reading this morning is from the book of Mark, chapter 11, verses 1 through 11, and can be found in the insert in your bulletin. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! Hosanna in the highest heaven! Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning again. Good morning. Please repeat after me. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. The king is coming. The king is coming. My name is Bob Irving, and it is a great joy to serve as the pastor here at Soul Bear United Methodist Church. And normally I start off with an explanation as to the sermon title or a story that has happened in my life. And today I do something just a little different. I mean, some of it's a story. And some of it is just observations. Nothing brings as much joy and as much anxiety as a child. I remember when my twins were born, how happy I was just to hold them. I also remember how afraid I was to cut their nails. <laughs> I was afraid that I would hurt them. And as Noah and David and Michaela and Stella the dog and Muffin the bunny visited us this, this week, I got to see a lot of the same love and a lot of the same anxiety that I experienced when my children were young. I mean, the joy in the face of my wife, we will call her Grammy because that's what they want to call her, as she held, rocked, and fed him is undeniable. It's the happiest I have seen her in years. And I also have the benefit of experiencing some of the anxiety as babies will have their temperatures fluctuate and we tend to keep our house cool but we have to raise the heat because he's cold. And as the grandfather or pops you're kind of limited in what you can do except hold him and sing to him. I mean, I experienced great joy holding him and singing, and guess what? He never criticizes my singing. <laughs> it's wonderful. The next thing that I noticed is people do not like being restricted by rules. Stand at any stop sign in Newtown, Pennsylvania. And you will notice that drivers do not like to stop. The, the, the police department of Newtown Township has even put signs underneath the stop signs that read, stop really does mean stop. I was hoping you were gonna mention that. <laughs> and then how about keeping the Sabbath holy? Well, I'm too tired to go to church. My friends and I are going to brunch. The kids have a soccer 
basketball, baseball, softball, football, travel team game. So we won't be able to go to church. But my favorite one, my favorite observation was a personal one that came to me one time when I was introduced to someone as Pastor Bob. And they said, oh, you're a pastor. They were very candid, they were very open, they were very honest. They said, where do you preach? By the way, I'm not a believer. And I said, really? You're, you're not a believer? And he said, yes, I don't believe in anything I can't see or touch. I said, oh, so you don't believe in TV signals, air, radio signals, cell phone signals? You can't see or touch them? Oh, well, that's different. Uh-huh. Okay. And I'm reminded of a, a reel that a friend sent me. There was a, I think I told you this story. I'm not sure who I've told this story to because I really like this story. A mathematician, a British mathematician named John Lennox is standing at a podium. He's obviously been, given a, been giving a speech about something and it's obviously about God. And someone in the crowd asks him, how can you love a God that throws people out of paradise just because they sought knowledge? And he had the best response I've ever heard. He said, that is a very good question. And the reason it's such a good question is because, as I recall, the first time it was asked, it was asked by a snake. Now you may be wondering what all this has to do with Palm Sunday and the triumphant entry of our Lord into Jerusalem. Well, maybe I will tell you, maybe I will not. Okay, I'll tell you. Please pray with me. Lord, the journey to Holy Week has ended and Holy Week begins. As we begin this week of remembrance and reflection, Speak to us about our roles and how we, as disciples, can fulfill your plan for us. We pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, clearly, we know that this is part of God's plan, this triumphant entry into Jerusalem. The picture that I have up here is a picture of the East Gate of Jerusalem. That gate enters directly into what would have been the temple courtyard. And that is the gate that Jesus entered into. The gate was sealed in 1540 and again in 1541 by the order of Solomon the Magnificent. He sealed this gate to prevent the Messiah from returning to Jerusalem. You'll also notice that there are what looks like stones in front of the gate. Those are not stones. Those are crypts with Muslims buried in them. With the, the sense being that the Holy One would become tainted by passing over the bones of the dead. Therefore, further ensuring that the Messiah will not enter through the East Gate, or will not exit later through the East Gate. And if we read Ezekiel, chapter 10, verses 18 to 19, Then the glory of the Lord went out from the threshold of the house and stopped above the cherubim. The cherubim lifted up their wings and rose up from the earth in my sight as they went out with the wheels beside them. They stopped at the entrance of the East Gate of the house of the Lord, and the glory of God of Israel was above them. And later in Ezekiel, And the glory of the Lord ascended from the middle of the city and stopped on the mountain east of the city, which is the Mount of Olives. Which is, I'm at the base of the Mount of Olives where I take this picture. And then later in Ezekiel, Then he brought me to the gate, the gate facing east. 
And there the glory of the God of Israel was coming from the east. The sound was like the sound of mighty waters, and the earth shone with his glory. The vision I saw was like the vision that I had seen when he came to destroy the city, and like the vision that I had seen by the river Chebar, and I fell upon my face as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east. The Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Jesus enters the gate, the east gate, because it is where the glory of the Lord is supposed to enter the city. And Jesus is the glory of the Lord. The people, most common people, have declared that Jesus is the Messiah, the rightful King of Israel, the Savior of the Jews, and we know the Savior of everyone. And that's the reason for the fanfare. These people have seen wonderful things. They have participated in wonderful things. And you already know the reason for the cult, but in case you don't, the prophet Zechariah writes, Rejoice greatly, O daughter Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter Jerusalem! Lo, your king comes to you! Triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He fulfills the prophecies. But not only does he fulfill the prophecies, but he's riding on a donkey. And although we probably do not know this, because we live in a modern time with automobiles, Kings of peace would often enter cities riding atop of a donkey. Kings of war would enter cities riding atop a horse. And while this is going on, there is a gentleman, you may have heard of him, by the name of Pontius Pilate, who is responsible for keeping the peace in Jerusalem, and the surrounding territories. And he has been vacationing at his home on the Mediterranean. And because Passover is approaching, he needs to get the legions that are guarding him at his resort home back to Jerusalem. He is entering the city at the same time through the gate that is opposite the gate of the east gate. He's entering through the west gate. And he has crowds there with Roman soldiers stationed in the crowds, prompting them with sword and spear to cheer the coming of Pontius Pilate. And the difference being, there is no prompting. This is something that the people are joyful about. And in regards to the opening stories that I told, our lives are filled with joy and anxiety. And people have multitude of excuses for their behavior, rationalizations if you want to call them. See, the same people cheering Jesus today will fall into a mob mentality on Friday and will be condemning him. Think of the roller coaster of emotions. As you leave today, wherever you are going, I want you to think that when you walk into wherever you are going, people are going to cheer you. People are going to love you. And then on Friday, people are going to tell you that you're going to be killed. What do you think that emotional roller coaster is like? And just think of Mary, both Marys. Mary the mother and Mary Magdalene. They must be 
so grateful for, for the joy that is being shown to Jesus Christ at this time. But what about on Friday? What happens to that joy? Think about the disciples, soon to be apostles. About Peter and his denial. All the people that Jesus has touched, has healed, has fed. It is a time of great joy, leading to a time of great sorrow, leading to a time of great joy. And what does that mean for us? Well, we are a great deal like the population of Jerusalem. We love Jesus. Is there anybody in here, raise your hand, that doesn't love Jesus? Raise your hand. Come on. No, no takers on that, huh? All right. The world itself, though, pulls us away from Jesus. The love we have for our children when they're gifted. It doesn't have to be a sport. It could be a musical thing. Sometimes, you know, county choirs and things, they, they meet on a Sunday. Our friends pull us away from Jesus. How many of you have ever taken a vacation with your friends that have led to you? I know a lot of you try to go to church on those days but have led to you missing church. Doing things you wouldn't normally do. It's part of being a human being, by the way. It's not a sin. It's just part of our life. Our families pull us away from Jesus. There's always a tug from the family. There's always something that we that we think we need to accomplish. And we come to church to remind ourselves that we love Jesus. Because sometimes, if you remember back all you retired people when you were working, when you're working, you forget that you love Jesus because you're under some great stress or, or some timeline. You forget the joy of having a relationship with Him. You see, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem is not for him. It is for the people. Because he knows what is coming. He has even told his followers what is coming. He's told them of his death and resurrection. Yet, except for Lazarus, Nobody's seen anybody resurrected. And since Jesus was the one that resurrected Lazarus, well, God, how is he going to do this trick if he's dead? But it is an acknowledgement that the people of Israel, not the leaders of Israel, although I believe they believe it also, that he is the king. He is the Messiah. He is God in human form. He's the one that set us free from slavery to sin and death. He's the one. So on this joyous, triumphant day, are we waving our palm branches and throwing down our cloaks for Jesus to enter our town? Will our lives turn that around by Wednesday, by Thursday, by Friday, by next week, by June? How about we figuratively, well, that's a word, figuratively throw down our skepticism, our inhibitions, and our reluctance to truly treat Jesus as our Savior? as our God, 
so that we can lay down palm branches and cloaks and give him a road to enter into our hearts. Amen. Now is the time for our offering. If you have an offering to give, we use a non-contact or minimal contact method of offering. There is a plate on the back table. Now will be the time for you to get up, put your offering in the plate, and when everyone is done, Wayne will bring it forward, and we will sing the doxology number 95. offering prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, as we bring our gifts and lay them at your altar, we remember the crowds in Jerusalem who laid their cloaks on the road, shouting Hosanna as Jesus passed. We know they were looking for a Messiah who was different from whom you sent Jesus to be, not one of political power and military might but one who came in compassion and mercy to heal, love, and save. Search our hearts that we might be confident that the Messiah for whom we long is the one you know we need, Jesus Christ, your anointed one, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please join Connie and Marge in our closing hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, found in your hymnal, number 298. <laughs> Oh. 
this service is over and as we go forth, may the love of our Lord Jesus Christ be deep within your heart. And may you always sing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Just so everyone is aware, there is a mommy, a Grammy, and a baby getting out of a vehicle in the parking lot. <laughs> Did you want to say something about uh, Holy Week and what you'll be doing? Sure. That's a great idea. Okay. Carol has the best ideas. For Holy Week, if you know the uh, YouTube uh, channel, Pastor in a Pickup, um, I will be doing the reading, uh, a reading from our booklet every day, and giving a small meditation on it afterwards. So if you choose to follow, I will send the links to Connie, who will send them out to people, and you can just go there, <clears throat> excuse me, and you will see me, ta-da, and uh, hear a little meditation. Thank you. Now we're on. Pop up, pick up, otherwise we would have had to change. Uh huh.